Welcome to the first of a series of conversations called My Lourdes Story. I'm Joan Cal, and I've spent a lot of time over the last few years in Lourdes, a place that's very special to me. I'll be talking to various people about their Lourdes experience and about what Lourdes means to them. Today I am talking to Bishop Donal McKeown. Bishop Donal was Auxiliary Bishop of Down and Connor for 13 years before being appointed as Bishop of Derry in 2014. Thank you so much, Bishop Donald, for agreeing to talk to me today. Thank you for asking me about something that I have a real passion for. Oh, that's good. Well, before we talk about Lourdes, Bishop Donald, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you spent your younger years in Randallstown in County Antrim. So will you just tell us a little bit about yourself growing up? Yeah, I grew up in, in, in Randallstown, born in 1950. Yes, I was born in the hospital in Belfast, but I mean, all my life was spent in Randallstown as a child. That's where my parents lived, the eldest of four children, and part of a big family network. My father was nearly the youngest of 13, one of whom left the area, and my mother was the eldest of eight. So I grew up with a big lot of cousins on the paternal side, and then I was the first one on the maternal side. So I've always grown up with that sense of, of belonging, being part of a network. And of course, a very healthy environment where you were involved in the parish as an ultra server and played GAA and hurling and did Irish dancing and went to Irish classes. And life was very rich in, in, in the 50s, I remember. It was a very happy environment in which to grow up. Um, and then I went to secondary school and so on. I think you, you did you play a bit of football and hurling for for uh, Craig and Kickhams, I think. Oh yes, the, 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 we have two parishes and four clubs. You've done your homework, yes. And Daddy came from Daddy came from Craigan, who won the All Ireland Senior Club hurling there about nine, nine or ten years ago. I mean, sorry, not Craig, the, the, the intermediate. Sorry, um, the Lock Eel won the, the All Ireland Senior there. But um, yes, we, we should have grew up in that cultural environment. Our neighbours were mainly Protestant. We played with them. So there was no sectarianism going on. It, it was very much sort of where your, your culture gave you a, a ground on which to stand rather than some sort of a cage in which it locked you. So we, we grew up in a very peaceable environment um, and, and sectarianism simply wasn't just part of our mentality. And you're a GAA man. I, I'm a, a GAA person myself, so I'm sure you won't hold it against me that I'm a true dub supporter. Oh, great. Oh, no. And, I say that, and my sister married into Loch Giel. Her nephews were playing on that All-Ireland Senior Club hurling team in, in 2012 or whatever it was. I was in Crook Park for that. So, yes, there's a, there's a strong cultural nationalist but not Republican background, if you know if that makes sense. A very sort of wholesome sense of culture and um, and, and, and belonging. And Bishop Donald, you went to Queens. Yes, you studied in Queens. Yeah, I, 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 I did my. I went to Garan Tower. It was called something. This is College Garan Tower. And then um, I was asked had I ever thought of being a priest, and I said yes. Yeah. So I sort of thought of it, gave it a try. So I went to the seminary in in Belfast in, in St Malachy's College, the Wing, as it was called, which had the great opportunity of giving you the uh, possibility of studying a degree at Queens. So I did my, I spent really five years getting my BA out of Queens. I did German and Italian with my two languages. A year in Queens, a summer in a factory in Italy, another year in Queens, a year in Germany, another summer in Italy, two years back in Queens again. So it was five years after I left school that I then was sent to Rome to do theology. But I must say, studying secular subjects at a secular university was a great experience. It was good good for broadening your horizons, for travel and so on. And of course, the languages and being on the continent got me to places that many of my peers wouldn't have been in um, in those late 60s, early 70s years. So I I, I had a good good education at school, great teachers, great priest teachers um, and good education in Queens. And you did a stint, I think, on Vatican Radio when you were in Rome, yes? Well, when, when, when I was in Germany for the year, 70, 71, 50 years ago, um, when I came back from Germany for the next two years, I did the Belfast correspondent for the German Catholic News Agency, Kai and mm-hmm. So I, I sent lots of reports from troubled Belfast. So when I went to Rome then, being, being on the media was sort of something that was natural enough. And some of us, including Bishop Kevin Dorn, would have translated the Vatican video news from Italian into English and then broadcast 
it on Sunday afternoons. And we some of us then we would have been the Rome correspondents for On Sale More, which was RTE's version of from our own correspondent. And we'd be asked periodically for reports of Gaelge for RTE. Uh, so when I came back to Belfast then, being involved in the media and thoughts for the day and broadcasting generally was just part of a, an ongoing interest in communications. So you're a man of a uh, good few languages then? Well, the Irish, German, Italian, I can handle those without, much, without too much concern. And have you French? I would have enough French to get me through Lourdes. And then when I was teaching in Belfast, I did eight, three years evening classes in Russian, one year Portuguese, three years Arabic. And then obviously you would have a bit of Latin, Greek and Hebrew as well. So it's bits and pieces of this and that. So Bishop Dono, I first met you in Lourdes a number of years ago when you were with the Derry group and I've met you several times since. So can you tell me um, when did you first visit Lourdes and what was it that brought you there? Well, I got to get back a long way. My grandfather was a stone cutter, stone mason. And in the 1920s, very early on, he was building at a church in a place called Money Glass in County Antrim. And the um, parish priest there was the executive secretary of the second Irish national pilgrimage to Lourdes in 1924, September, October. And he brought his chief stone cutter and his chief joiner out to Lourdes. So my grandfather got to Lourdes when nobody left the country at all. So my mother grew up with stories of Lourdes from 1924, the pilgrimage that brought the, the cross and crown for the Rosary Basilica, um, as distinct from the first pilgrimage which to Lourdes in 1913, which brought the, the cross at the bottom of the high stations. Um, so my mother grew up with that. And then they were married in 49. I was, born, I was born in 1950, early. And in the autumn of that year, my mother and father, the father says, oh, we're going to do something for this holy year. So they got a train to Rome and came back via Lourdes. So Lourdes has been in your blood for a long time. Yes. And then as the eldest grandchild, when my grandmother and my mother were going to Lourdes in 63, my father says, take the child along, he'll carry the cases for you. <laughs> so I sort of went at that stage and I've been going a lot ever since. And initially four years with CLM then as a young priest. Okay. Poor Chori Limwera then asked to start up the Down and Connor pilgrimage in, in 83, 84. We did that for 10 years and... Um, uh, then obviously been traveling with Down and Connor, then traveling with Derry in this past five or six years. Then I've been national, whatever it is I am, of what used to be called the IHCPT, the Irish Pilgrimage Trust for the Easter week. So I've been going to Lourdes, going with a range of hats on. Um, for a long, long time. Yes, sort of almost before I was born, I was in Lourdes <laughs> through my grandfather. And then my parents abandoned me to go to Lourdes when I was only a few months old and then through CLM, diocesan pilgrimages, um, and most recently, the Irish Pilgrimage Trust. So it obviously means a lot to you. Ah, yes. It, 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 it's, it's great memories. You meet great people. You know that yourself. Absolutely. You meet great people, whether it's the, the, the invalids or those who are working with them or the young people. I mean, for a place that has so many who are ill or, or disabled in one way or another, it's, um, it's full of fun and laughter. It's not a depressing place in any way. Isn't there something, though, when you go to Lourdes, you, you feel as if you're a part of something really special when you're actually there? And you're part of an international church, too. And I think we, we sort of find a, a wider range, you know yourself, a wider range of faces and national backgrounds coming to Lourdes than would have been the case, certainly, when I was going initially, when it was very much a, a European shrine. Um, yes, you do feel part of something and... Um, it's a really encouraging place to be in, as well as a prayerful place, whether you're down at the baths or down at the grotto or just over in the prairie or going to the sacrament of reconciliation or the blessing of the sick or whatever. And then the international masses and the underground, that sense of wonderful music. and Yes, unbelievable. And 
I spent time with the, the Dairy Diocese and Lords, and one thing that always strikes me about the Dairy Group is that it's a very spiritual pilgrimage, but also there's there's great camaraderie and fun over the few days that you're there. Um, would you agree that like spirituality and fun are both of importance when you're actually in Lords? Well, I suppose I have to say about Derry, particularly since, since I've come here seven years ago, um, they've suffered a huge amount during the Troubles. Mm -hmm. And that's meant that there is a great sense of camaraderie and um, equality, of fairness, of, 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 of belonging and looking after one another. So I, I think the Northerners have had a different experience just of the Troubles compared with those who live in the Republic. And that's inevitably going to have affected how they see themselves and how they hold um, together. So, yeah, I, I'm very blessed to be in Derry now. It's, it's, it's a good fit for me, big enough to have a wide range of parishes and variety. And yet, on the other hand, there's a, there's a homeliness about it. There's a, there's, a, there's a sense of belonging and identity. And the fun is part of it. Yeah, you're a great man yourself, I think, for the quizzes and for the. I know Jerry always have a, a Jerry's Got Talent evening. And I know yes. you, yourself have done a, a good impersonation of Simon Cowell there in your role as um, head judge. Well, that was all part of it. It was one of the doctors who really was behind organizing that one evening, um, one year. So we've kept it up, but it's, it's really is only a, it's only a, a joke. Yeah, it is a good bit of fun, yeah. and people get up and some perform songs or they sing and dance. And you can't really compare a child dancing to an adult choir with a prepared song. This is a variety, but it's good. It's good fun. It's good. Fun. And you, all, you always have a great um, youth group in Lourdes with you, and they're such a credit uh, to the diocese. Am I right in saying that you were one of the founding members of the diocese in Lourdes youth team? Well, in 1982, at the end of it, Bishop Cattle Daly asked me to start our first diocesan pilgrimage to Lourdes. Mm -hmm. We had one to Rome in 83. I was only a young priest at that stage. And our first Lourdes was in 84. And strangely, I came to Derry to ask advice as to how we organised your first pilgrimage. So 84 went off fine, and then Bishop Cattle Daly said, we're all very well, Donald, but we're very few young people. So having done four years with CLM prior to that, I said, sort of thought, mm, we could try that model for a Down and Connor youth team. Yeah. So that really built up then over the years, um, initially going out overland in CLM style, um, and then more recently, they take them away for three days, near the airport in a training centre and then fly them out from, from Belfast Airport without going home. So at least they have bonding and building and prayer time and so on together. So yes, uh, having been a school teacher and school principal for nearly 23 years, I enjoy young company. Um, and, and I think the youth team, A, they're wonderfully generous and inspiring themselves, but B, I think they benefit from belonging and yeah. realising the pilgrimage couldn't go ahead without them. And the, the, their own sharings with one another about faith and loss and tears and dreams and hopes. I think Lourdes is a wonderful place where you're away from your normal environment. You build new friendships and it can be a very formative time for, for, for young people. So, yes, I'm very proud of our young people who behave themselves impeccably. Yeah, and yet they're, 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 they're good fun. They enjoy it. They don't come back feeling, boy, that was tough going. They may feel tired. But I think we all find it was a, an enriching experience and yeah. different people have different experiences. It could be the grotto at night. It could be walking up to the, the Green Cathedral in the city secure. I mean, any of those things, different memories are created for them of being together. You've taken them off to walking up to Bartres as well, I think, have you, when you were there? Well, I go out to Bartres every time I'm out in Lewis, please. I try to get an afternoon to walk out to Bartres and walk back in again. And yeah. if some people come with me, that's great. You can't take too many. If you stay on the road, it's quite twisting and dangerous. Mm -hmm. But generally, I'll take a few adults with me anyway. Or maybe if I have nephews and nieces who are out with me, I would say, come yeah. on. Yeah. You know, I want to show off that I'm fit for this too. So <laughs> There are so many special things about Lourdes. Is there any one thing in particular that you say, oh, yeah, that's my favorite place to be when I'm there? Oh, well, the, 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 the grotto at night, yeah. when it's reasonably quiet, is, is, is obviously the place where where you can find space to breathe and, and just let the Lord touch your heart. And, you know, everybody else is moving around quietly. 
nobody's making a fuss and people are with their own thoughts and their own dreams. And I know so many people enjoy going down when it's quiet um, and just being at peace with their own tears or their own whatever it happens to be. Thank you so much, Bishop Donald, for talking to me. I've really enjoyed it. And just you, before Jill. we go, I know you've been a regular contributor to BBC Radio Ulster's Thought for the Day. So could you leave us maybe with a thought for the day before we sign off? Well, two. One of them is I'm on Thought for the Day tomorrow morning, <laughs> 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 which will last about three minutes and so on. But the, the, the phrase I, I like to use, and I used it when I was on... on um, RTE just over the, the, the World Meeting of Families meeting in Dublin, along with Mary O'Callaghan and so on. I was asked just what, what my final words were. I, I like the words of Bishop or of Father Timothy Radcliffe, the Dominican. The only thing I know about the future of the church is that it has one. Thank you so much, Bishop Jonal, for sharing your Lord's story with us today. Okay, Joan, thank you for asking me. Thank you very much. Bye.